So the big question is this, how do most agents who struggle to get the information that most successful agents hoard to themselves grow and prosper without this information? That's the big question and this video cast is the answer. Welcome to Real Estate Rockstars. I'm your host, Pat Hyman. All right, Rockstar Nation, I got a great returning guest, but this guy has not been on since episode 196, and now we're over 700, so I'm glad to get him back. He went into a void for two and a half years, probably, and it's my fault for not inviting him back, but uh, here's the thing. He popped up on the radar again because back when I interviewed him on episode 196, he had made the top 50 for 30 under 30. And didn't make the cut for the 30 under 30. For so for two more years, he was struggling to try to get into that list. He finally got into that list. And uh, funny thing is now he's mentoring other agents how to get on the 30 under 30 list. And of course, he's killing it. He's uh, doing some good things in his hometown uh, in Wisconsin. And uh, we're going to jump into that. So without further ado, Tyler, welcome back to Real Estate Rockstars. Thanks so much for the invite. So let's talk a little bit about Tyler Meyer. Uh, who are you and uh, uh, how can we get to know you? Uh, well, I just turned 27 a few weeks ago. Um, I'm eight years in the business full-time now. Um, I started uh, full-time at 19 and have not looked back uh, ever since. Uh, my market, uh, the average sales price is right around 170000 and um, in 2017, I closed uh, just over 61 transactions, uh, just under 12 million, um, and I'm I just hit uh, I believe the 50 million mark for career sales. That's awesome, dude. So you're cranking out five sales a month, right? And yep. And and it's uh, is it just you? You have a team or what? Uh, it's just totally me. I do have a part-time uh, licensed assistant, um, but she is primarily just doing my direct mailing program and uh, kind of filling in when I need her at uh, last-minute emergencies. All right. That's awesome. And I love this, right? Because uh, here you're cranking out, you're doing business, and uh, you're doing a lot of it, and you're 27. So let's get to some nitty-gritty there. So what was your ECI, Tyler, your ego commission income? What was your total commission say in the last 12 months? Um, in the last 12 months, I would say it was about two, uh, 270,000. Sweet. And what's your profit margin? Um, I'm sitting at about 185 to 190,000 right around there. Okay. So if 270, so about 70, 70%, maybe so 65, 70%. So you're not spending much, which is great. Um, and we're going to find out why. So, uh, well, obviously one reason why is because you're doing it all yourself. Let's talk about your business. What type of business are you doing? How many listings versus buyers? Well, primarily uh, in the beginning of my career, I, I was uh, genuine, uh, genuinely a listing agent. Um, in 2014, I listed about 54 expired homes. And um, with our limited inventory we've had, I have had to reposition my business uh, to support um, about 60% buyers and 40% and listings. Um, so I'm doing about 30-ish listings a year. and right around 35, 35 buyers a year. And so your, your market got better. So there were less expired. Is that the long and short of it? Correct. Correct. Um, usually my County has about, um, 1300 single family homes on the market. Uh, right now we're sitting at about 750 and about 300 of those have accepted offers on them. Really? So you went from, say, 1,300 to 400, right? Uh, active inventory. Yes, we have a super, super tight market here. So what are you doing about that? Well, thankfully, um, you know, I think after you've been in the business for an extended period of time, most of your uh, business comes from a sphere of influence. And um, about 70% of my clients now are past 
uh, past clients, um, and the other 30% is, is coming from uh, my social media following, my Facebook following, and whether or not that's a uh, referral from another agent uh, throughout the country or you know, someone that happens to be following me outside of, of Wisconsin that's making a transition to the Midwest. Wow. And so, so I want to talk about this. So is this, is this the tightest your market? First of all, you're, what part of Wisconsin are you? I'm in the Lake Geneva, Wisconsin area, so it's just on the border of Illinois. Okay, so on the border of Illinois and Wisconsin, and is this the tightest that this market has ever been in that area? Is I the- would say absolutely. And has the number of agents decreased because they just can't get business? Well, I think that's a good portion of the problem is actually the number of agents have increased. Uh, We have more realtors in my market right now than we've ever had. Um, And the inventory is disappearing pretty quickly. And that's homes ranging anywhere from 30,000 all the way up to, uh, we have a listing on the market right now that just went under contract uh, for 14.5 million. 14.5 million. Yes, and that, yes, and that hit the market 30 days ago. Uh, wow. So, like, I think there's a misperception, right, when, when, uh, with agents, right, when they see stuff selling, right, so fast, they automatically assume that a fast tr- sale means there's a lot of transactions, so they should get into the business because there's transactions. But in this case, there's not transactions, right? They're just, they're just stuff is selling real fast, but the transactions has dropped. Correct. Yep, absolutely. Um, our average sales price has definitely um, seen about a 8% increase over the last uh, 10 months or so. So that, that's definitely been an improvement. And that's primarily with single family homes. Our condo market hasn't increased as much. And why do you think your market is in such demand? Um, I think uh, for me personally, I've, I'm starting to break into the higher end market and um, we are a lake community. Um, it's a second and third home market primarily. And Illinois has a, a really, really big problem with their high taxes. Um, most people are relocating just over the border um, so they can escape those high taxes. Um, here you can purchase a home on five to seven acres for Anywhere from four to five hundred thousand, and your taxes are going to be about seven thousand dollars a year. Um, whereas in Illinois, they're going to be about fifteen to twenty in that per- in that price range. Hmm. Interesting. And where, do you have state tax there? Do you have income tax? Yes. Like, yeah. Uh, okay. Yes. Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I remember the last uh, episode we did. I mean, you were you, you were an expired king. I mean, that and that is how you got into the business. And, and how you did so well at such a young age. And, and I guess now you're feeling lucky that you were able to tap into that, and uh, now you can't almost, right? Right, right. Um, definitely, you know, it does work here and there, expireds. Um, but like anything else, I think the market is going to turn eventually, and they will work again at some point. Do you, do you, are you still doing them? I am, yes. I, I have not stopped a single day, actually, since we last spoke. Um, so I have, however, changed up my entire expired uh, mailing program just as of three months ago, and my expireds have started picking up again. I'm, s- I'm sitting at about two calls per week uh, over the last uh, 90 days or so. All right. Tell us about that. Um, well, you know, the last time around, I, I was doing a 90 uh, day uh, guarantee program, which um, would allow any uh, seller um, to be able to opt out of their listing contract if after 90 days it, the uh, property did not sell. And that was primarily where a lot of my calls were coming from. Um, like I said, in, in the 2014 uh, 2015 market, I listed uh, both years over 40 expired homes. Um, and about 70 per, uh, 78% of those did sell uh, both years. And I just found that, um, you know, you have to continuously evolve because our market is changing constantly. Um, you can't uh, expect to succeed by continuously doing the same things over and over again. You have to really find a new way to do it. Okay, so tell me exactly what you changed. 
Um, so I've been entirely eliminated uh, the 90-day uh, program uh, from my expired mailings, and I've uh, now switched it over to my success and, and, and how my success has been over the last five years. I think when you're a new agent, you don't necessarily have uh, the sales behind you, so you um, have to find another avenue, whether it's leaning on your, uh, your company, um, having a great company behind you, um, or once you get to the point of having some real solid sales behind you and some transaction success, uh, you, can, you can really lean on that to um, provide value to sellers that need our help. I mean, I'm, I'm a huge advocate of anybody that gets into real estate, they really need to focus on uh, marketing themselves to expire. It's regardless of, you know, whether there's limited inventory, there's always sellers that need our help. Brokers and team leaders, are you tired of seeing dwindling numbers at your monthly sales meetings? And I don't mean numbers as far as sales, I mean numbers as far as agents attending. Do you struggle with creating new and exciting content that will not only motivate your agents, but deliver actual results to them? Do you want your agents using proven sales techniques that increase their commissions? We've got the answer for you. Rebus University is launching a lunch and learn series you can purchase to provide structure and content to your meetings. The series has 12 30 minute trainings taught by me and top producers from around the world and specifically is designed to increase production for your agents. Plus, when you purchase these trainings, you will also receive significant discounts for the go-getters on your team or in your office who want more training and bigger results. So don't delay. Go to hybendigital.com backslash teams. That's hybendigital.com backslash teams or call Katherine Brower today at 843-749-9900. That's 843-749-9900. And get started with your Rebus University Lunch and Learn. And I'm hoping this, this, this episode will give inspiration to those who have an expired market uh, or a healthy expired market uh, to actually do something about it uh, before it could be too late, like it, it is almost with you. Like now you're looking back like, damn, you know, I, I used to be all listings and now I'm resorting to 60% buyers, which you and I both know is harder and more work. And you're like, wow, I, I didn't know it could, it could change like this. So talk to me about like if I'm an expired listing in your market currently and I expire, let's just say expire today. Well, give me an idea of what's going to happen with Tyler and me in the next 90 days. What am I going to get from you? What can I expect? Uh, well, so initially, um, if you were to expire out, let's say on a Monday, um, you're going to get a, uh, a full colored brochure for me that's uh, fully laminated uh, front and back. It, it lays out my, uh, my advertising program for you. Um, where you're being advertised, uh, whether, uh, you know, the professional photos that are a part of it, um, the constant uh, follow-up that I do provide for my sellers. I do call my clients every Friday with updates, and I think that uh, a lot of agents really lack in that category, unfortunately. So um, the majority of the complaints from previous expireds that I receive are, you know, their agents not following up with them. They don't know exactly where they're um, advertising their properties at, and Quite frankly, they really didn't do a whole lot for them. Um, so I I do lay out a, a full uh, brochure as far as you know what I'm offering and um, some area sales right around where their home has sold. So I do update that for each expired uh, letter uh, and brochure that goes out. And then over the following three weeks, you're getting uh, seven follow-up um, postcards or letters from me. Um, on a probably every four day basis, uh, just as as follow up goes. Wow, every four days they're getting something for the next ninety. Uh, 
Yeah, so every four days you're getting something from me in the mail. In my market, I've found that the magic number seems to be seven. The average expired that's calling me now received my letters at least six months ago. And Okay, wow. And what do these letters say? Are they postcards? Are they handwritten notes? Are they, you know? Yep, so the postcards, um, they're, they're full color front and back, which uh, my uh, great company's marketing department uh, created, and I can provide copies to you so, you know, um, agents can see them. And I'd be happy to, uh, you know, send out examples of what I've done in the past as well. Yeah, I'll take um, you up on that. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, you know, again, it's, it's, I don't know necessarily that it, it's entirely about uh, the content that are in there. Um, you do need to have great content, but it's more about the follow-up. Uh, most agents are, you know, if, if at all, if they're sending expireds out, they're maybe sending one or two, and they're not really ever getting to that level three, um, where I found it's really six or seven uh, follow-ups that are really needed for them to give you a call. Six or seven. Wow, that's amazing. So, okay, cool. So, um, all right, well, good. So, uh, let's talk about 30 under 30 for a little bit. You first, you went out, right? You got in the 50. You're like, damn, I'm, I'm this close, but you got cut, right? And then uh, you went the next year and nothing, right? And yes. uh, then you did another year and did you get a nada again or did you make it that year? Um, so I was a, uh, I was a 30 under, uh, 50 finalist for 2015 and did not, uh, did not make it as a 50 finalist for 16 and for 17 from 2016, I, I closed eight, eight, just over eight and a half million. Um, but my business increased in 2017 to right around 12 million with, uh, 60 over 61 transactions. So I was really, um, you know, having issues kind of breaking into that $10 million plus market. Um, and I just kept my head down and focused on what I really needed to do. I, I, I um, kept away from being distracted and, and just did what I, and I know best. And that's helping my area buy and sell. And then and you think that's what they look for. They look, they want you to do 10 million or more ideally. And it, it was just, I, I don't, I don't think the numbers matter uh, at all, to be honest. Um, I think it's more so um, your community involvement, what you're doing in your, in, in my local community. Um, I was a um, uh, association board member. Um, I also was the chair of our young professionals network. And I really um, stepped up and uh, started attending uh, the NAR events um, and our uh, YPN events. Um, I also spoke at uh, last year's National Association of Realtors um, convention in Chicago. So, um, you know, it wasn't for me, it was not about necessarily obtaining 30 under 30. It was just helping as many uh, younger agents succeed as I could along the way. Um, I, I know totally what it's like being uh, very, very young in the business, not knowing what the hell you're doing and, and really needing a mentor and needing that guidance around you um, to stay in the business. So is that what you're speaking about? Is it kind of like now you're at uh, on all levels, you're just speaking about anything that can help other agents? Um, yeah, that has always been my goal. I, I spoke um, at NAR um, about having a high debt load and uh, being successful in the business. Wait a minute, what does um, that I mean? Had a, I had a pretty high uh, amount of debt with my college uh, <laughs> college experience that I had. Uh, just after high school, I did not finish college. Um, I ended up uh, going down a, a a difficult path my first semester and, and getting kicked out of college and it left me with you know quite a bit of, of college debt that I had to overcome on top of jumping into a business that required uh, income to start up. Okay. Got it. Got it. Okay, cool. So I want to talk to you about being you because this seems to be a theme. You know, I've I've had Jenica, Jenica Holmquist, who's also one of the 30 under 30s this year, on and her interview is is out now so you, you're going to hear that you're going to be able to hear that first before Tyler's but but uh, she said a lot of controversial things I don't want to get into it now but she had a lot of controversial things and she was so happy that I wasn't editing them and uh, she said that she felt like NAR edited her and she felt like uh, a lot of the p other people that have have interviewed her since winning 
have uh, you know edited her ability to be herself. And um, this is something that you're proud of that, you know, as you've seen other people grow and prosper in this business, you've seen them change. Um, So talk to me about this. Well, I mean, when I got into the business, it, it, it was a very scary time for me because I'm, I'm in a very, very conservative market. Um, I'm also probably one of the only gay realtors around. Um, and, I really had uh, difficulty embracing that um, when I first uh, got into real estate. Um, I, you know, I wasn't quite sure how my clients would react to that. I wasn't quite sure how my colleagues would react to that. Um, I don't know necessarily that I was really quite sure of myself at that time. And as uh, my success uh, evolved, I um, just realized, you know, throughout that I needed to be myself and. I think the biggest thing that's changed since we spoke last is I um, have totally embraced who I am and, and um, you know, I, I will only work with clients that are okay with that. Um, I'm not afraid to turn down um, people that are not really the right fit for me. And, um, you know, it, real estate's just all about being honest. It's all about being who you are and, and, and buyers and sellers really want to, they want to know that. So what does that mean? Like how, like, um, how did you, uh, let's say starting from when you first started, you were unsure whether if you said, you know, not that you would say this, but that if you said, hey, I'm gay, you know, you would get half as much business as you would normally be hiding it, let's say. You know, you know how did you, how do you become more actualized of your true self? Like, give, give us some examples, and I'm hoping that, you know, this will inspire others. Yep, yep. Um, I think for me, really one of the biggest things was previously I would really hide who I was on uh, most of my social media. I would I would um, not really make that known. I, I wouldn't make, you know, any comments regarding that. I, I would just really keep my life as private as possible. Um, and the biggest change is that I've, opened up a uh, majority of my life to the public. I mean, they, they you know, I, I think my clients really want to know that we are actual human beings behind being a realtor. Um, they want to know what's going on in our lives. And, and I've, I've really, I think done that with, um, especially my Facebook page. I've, I've, I've really opened that up. So give me some specifics. What have you done? Well, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's a pretty minor thing, but I think, um, you, you know, your relationship status for one, I would have never in a million years disclosed that to the general public probably five years ago. Um, now, um, I, I, ha- I've done that. And if, if anything, I, I think it's actually helped my business increase because I've not been shy about, um, just in general about being who I am. You know, if, if it does happen on a regular basis, if a client asks me, you know, the answer is going to be yes. If, you know, in the past, if they, it did happen where I, I was asked that question and, and I, I wouldn't exactly answer it. <laughs> but but no, do people really come out and ask you, are you gay? Or is it more like, you know, you would think it would be like self-selecting, like they would meet you and you'd be like, if they, if they, let's say had a problem with your choices that maybe they just wouldn't return your calls or is it 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 wasn't necessarily that they would come out and ask me quite like that it would be um it would be more so having the issue in my head per se um keep me from you know trying to be as outgoing as i am as a person um and and really displaying who I am. Um, it was always in the back of my head, you know, well, if, if I was exactly who I am, would my clients continue to work with me? And, um, it was not so long after we last spoke that I had a few clients who, um, did come out and ask me and, and, you know, they all said the same thing. Well, if you're just yourself, you're, you're going to be just fine and and you're going to really succeed. You know, clients really don't care. So, (laughs) Yeah, and I think you probably found it served you actually in that it freed you up to be more confident, right? But it also, yep. I think on some level, it helps. I mean, it's like the way 
how should I say, uh, a lot of cultures think, let's say American culture thinks a lot, is that the more private that you are, or used to think maybe the more private that you are, uh, the more people will like you, right? The, you don't want to, you, the more imperfect, or, or I don't know if that's a good word, but the di more different that right. you are um, is probably a good word, unique. And it's actually like the opposite, right? I, it's like an example would be, let's say you have a brother that has a, a meth problem. I'm just pulling this out of my ass, right? You have a brother that has a meth problem, and, and um, you tell that to somebody, and suddenly they're like, oh, yeah, well, my uncle does too, or my, my aunt. And then suddenly they like you because you have a similar like, and they're connected to you. And I think that connection exists because you are so vulnerable by admitting that, where before without volunteering that you're just kind of robotic in a sense and there's no connection yep. there it's very difficult to make a connection if you're not going to be authentic in any way shape or form so it's the exact opposite of the cultural lessons that were taught earlier on i guess is am i making any sense <laughs> no you definitely are I, I think the biggest thing is is that you know there's always a way to connect with someone you just have to um, find out what that point is for them and and uh, for me overcoming the biggest obstacle of probably my entire life that was that was it and once i did that you know it's 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 all downhill from here so as a member of the rock star nation you may have noticed that every guest that comes on the show now is required to bring with them a free tool an item of utility that real estate agents can use to drastically increase their sales and profits. Some of the things that have been brought have been ebooks, forms, reports, negotiating techniques, hiring guides, postcards, checklists, open house secrets, newsletters that are sent out, sphere of influence forms, referral request forms, and the list goes on and on. If you would like to get this free toolbox, full of items of utility simply go to hybendigital.com backslash toolbox that's hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or simply text toolbox to 444-999 that's toolbox to 444-999 So let's talk about, um, you know, how you're growing your business today. And, and also I want to talk about how are you handling like five deals a month is pretty, you know, is no joke. Like what, first of all, what, what, what's, you don't have an assistant other than a marketing assistant and you, you know, how are you, what software, what apps, what, what are you using in, in that realm to help you keep track of all these deals you're doing? Yep. So um, I'm using Top Producer on a on a oh, basically daily basis. It, it just kind of keeps me on top of my game. It it, it can be a little bit a, a little bit much sometimes, but um, Top Producer is a really great app uh, and software program that you know helps run our business and especially with reminders, whether it's follow up with um, sellers or or buyers or you know reaching out to um, some buyers that we need to on a regular basis just to kind of keep them in the pipeline. Um, it, it really helps immensely. Um, and you know, another, another thing with that is I set many alarms on my phone for reminders as well. So, um, that's been quite helpful. Like, What are you reminding yourself on your phone about? Um, well, I mean, I, I have my full schedule on my phone. Um, so I, I always know where I need to be at any certain time. And I think, it, you know, that's definitely one of the biggest, um, uh, issues when you get super busy, you know, agents, I think, tend to have issues uh, trying to uh, come up with a plan on, on, you know, the hours they need to be in the office, um, when they need to be booking their appointments. Um, so I've really set my schedule that I'm, I tend to try to be in the office between 8 and uh, 11 a.m. almost every morning. And then the rest of the day, I'm out on appointments if I can be, um, just to kind of keep myself focused. Hmm. Okay. And, and so let's talk a little bit about um, appointments. Let's say, you know, I'm going to go with listing, but it kind of goes to buyers too, but listings for now. Let's say that you're going on a listing appointment against a team, 
right? And you're a solo guy. Uh, you're still 27, although you've been in business eight years. Just, you've got a ton of experience, but you're still young, right? Um, and you're going against uh, an agent with a large team, probably older than you. What, how are you going to beat them out? Um, well, I think for me personally, it, it's always about the uh, level of service that you're getting from your agent. Um, and I've found that usually teams tend to be busier than your average single agent. Um, so, you know, the biggest thing that you can tell a seller is, you know, letting them know that you're uh, a little bit more available. You're a little bit more on top of your business because it is just you. Um, so you're, for me personally, I, I, I'm focusing on um, the transactions that I know are going to close and, and, you know, letting sellers know that you're available. It, it, it never really comes down to, um, in my opinion, in a, a seller uh, comparing a single agent to a team. Um, it never really comes down to an issue because as long as you're honest with them and, and you're honest about the market, the marketing program you have for them, um, they're going to listen to you. And I think it tends to be with teams, the um, agent who's running the team tends to be less available and you're usually sent to their assistant or somebody else on their team member and, um, you know, you may or may not ever speak to them. Right. So you're just reiterating that fact and letting them know, hey, do you want to speak? Do you, do, do you want to deal with the, you know, the star player or do you want to deal with the, the water boy? Right. I mean, exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Love it. Love it. Okay. All right. So um, what is something now that you're finding, right? And this will be very interesting in your market where the juice just doesn't, isn't worth the squeeze anymore, like, or never was. Like, what is something you see agents doing that you think, you know, I wouldn't, I don't want to do that because it's, it's the return on investment is not there. I, for me personally, it's, it's weekend open houses. <laughs> I, I have not, I've not personally done an open house in the last four years. Um, I, if anything, actually I've uh, created uh, limits for myself. I now take every Sunday off. Um, I think we all as agents need time to uh, recharge. And, you know, I, I always, I, I think especially when you're new, you always want to be available. You want to jump at every single call that comes. You want to rearrange your schedule for, a buyer that needs to see a house immediately. Um, but a good, a, a good way to weed out some of those people that are not necessarily as serious is um, actually a arranging a scheduled time to meet with them, whether that's a seller or a buyer. You know, you never want to really jump right that second unless you absolutely have to. And I, I think that that's just genuinely helped my business um, continue to move to the next level. Love it, love it, love it. All right, cool. So, Tyler, um, let, let, let's wrap this up with our flagship question. And I can't remember if you answered this or not. I don't even know if we had this back on 196. I don't think we had. But um, let's say I took you and I put you in a situation, a reality TV show similar to Survivor. And uh, the people that I'm going to put in here are the top 30 under 30. So, you've got 29 competitors and you're all going after a $2 million prize. Now, uh, what I'm doing is I'm transporting you to a town where there's a lot of people and there's business going on, houses being sold, but you know no one and the other 29 competitors don't know anybody. You get a $1,000, a laptop, and a phone, and I send you on your way. Whoever sells the most houses in a six-month period wins $2 bucks. How is Tyler Meyer going to win this $2 million? Well, I, I'm definitely going to tell you that I'm going to wear out the bottom of my shoes by knocking on uh, every higher-end neighborhood that I can. I would take about $1,000 of that and uh, belong to a uh, local uh, golf course community. I would spend my downtime there trying to uh, break into the higher-end market, and the rest of the funds would be used for me to uh, pay for my gas to uh, knock on as many neighborhood doors as I can. It's all about being face to face, I think, with uh, potential customers and 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 being available for them. Yeah. So just just old fashioned hard work, right? Absolutely, absolutely. 
Well, that's awesome, dude. Well, listen, I really appreciate you coming back on. And um, as you know, everybody that comes on the show brings a free gift. You've already volunteered your letters and your postcard. Is that gonna, are those going to be your free gift today, or do you got something else for us as well? Uh, nope, that's going to be it. And that's an awesome gift, uh, by the way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these letters and postcards that he's going to share with us on hybendigital.com backslash Tyler Meyer and the number two. That's Tyler, M-E-Y-E-R, and the number two. Tyler Meyer, two. And I'm also going to put him in the Agent Success Toolbox, which can be found on hybendigital.com backslash toolbox or texting the word toolbox to 444-999. Tyler, look, buddy, it's been great uh, catching up with you. Congratulations on Thank making so it to the 30 under 30 after all those years of persevering and trying again and again and and not giving up. Congrats, and I uh, wish you the best of luck. And uh, keep me posted on your market. I'm curious to see uh, how it continues to progress. Yep, thanks so much. And for any of you listening that do need help with your business, don't hesitate to reach out to me on social media. I'm always available. So I'm Yeah, and I'll put all his links up there, guys. I'll put all his links in his show notes if you want to reach out and say hi and thank you and follow him and see what he's posting, seeing how he's being his authentic self. It will all be on hypendigital.com backslash Tyler Meyer too. Tyler, have a great day, buddy. Thanks so much. Yep, you as well. Thanks. Thank you so much for tuning in to Real Estate Rockstars. If this free content is giving you a ton of value, I want to ask a small favor in return. I need you to pull out your pointing finger and hit the subscribe button. Yes, hit subscribe, please. The more subscribers that we get on Real Estate Rockstars, the better guests are attracted to the shows. We'll get more guests from the top companies, from the top teams, and even more celebrity guests like Robert Kiyosaki and Barbara Corcoran. Also, if you're not a member of our free Facebook group, go to Real Estate Rockstars Radio right on Facebook and join the conversation. I'm on there myself on FaceTime Lives, and we have a lot of communications and questions about the show, and I'd love to see you there. And it's free. People ask me all the time, where am I on social media? I'm real easy to find. Just type in my name. My IG is I am Pat Hyben. It is blowing up on Instagram, adding tons of subscribers. And I'm on there probably twice a day. So definitely follow me on Instagram as well as everywhere else. Thanks again for listening and keep rocking.